Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today we are showcasing a new card to the format, which is Copcoat Vanguard, which is from the Aftermath set which came out quite recently. This is a 2 mana 2-2 two, two human that pumps your other humans and gives them ward. So, not necessarily the most exciting thing, but a very useful tool for the human deck, which has been sort of on and off, sort of on the fringes of legacy and done quite well here and there. So, our deck is very much a tribal deck. Just look at our mana base. We've got four cavernous souls, four secluded courtyard, four unclaimed territory. So, we're just putting these on human and casting our spells. So, we have Champion of the Parish as one of our one drops, which can grow pretty effectively with all the other stuff we've got going on. We've got four Esper Sentinel, which has become a sort of mainstay disruptive white creature these days. We have four Noble Hierarch, which happens to be a human. Even though it's green, we're playing things like Horizon Canopy as our other land as well, so we can have more ways of casting this, but it's just going to pump the one creature we attack with, and it's just going to be a human and help us bridge to the three drops that are in our deck. Then we have four of R because these help us deploy multiple creatures in the turn, and that's what we're all about. As for the two drop slot, we got the, the Vanguard we've already mentioned, four Thalia, sort of the, the premier mono white disruptive creature. We have four Thalia's Lieutenant. This is a creature that when it comes into play, it pumps your humans, and then when you play humans, it gets pumped itself. So you can also do tricks with this and Aether Vial, where you can. Um, Put this into play and then eat in another human and then you make sure you get um, the counters on the human that you've just put in etc etc so there's a little bit of a timing trick with that you can do then we've got a couple of brutal cathar as removal again it's a human and we have two palace jailers another human that can disrupt your opponent's creatures and remove them from the game give you the monarch to draw you more threats and we have sigrid which is similar to brutal cathar but it has first strike and protection from gold creatures, probably not going to come up this league. But it's there. Uh, this can only exile attacking or blocking creatures. I'm not really sure this is better than Brutal Cathar, to be honest. But here it is. And we have Adeline. This is a very powerful creature that scales the amount of creatures you have. And produces more creatures on its own. And obviously they're all humans. So they're all going to get all the pump synergies we've got going on here. So that's pretty tasty. And speaking of pump synergies, we have a 3 mana 3-3 three, three guy that pumps all your other humans. And it does give you the ability to exile, uh, sorry, to destroy some bigger creatures as well as messing with your opponent's graveyard. So there's some nice tech there. Now there's one card we haven't mentioned yet. Enlistment Officer. This is a 4 mana 2, 3 first striker, so not very exciting. But it looks at the top 4 cards of your library and you get all the soldiers from the top 4 into your hand. Soldiers, you say, which ones do we have? Palace Jailer. General Kudro. Um, Brutal Cathar. The Coppercoat Vanguard. Thalia's Lieutenant, Thalia herself, Champion of the Parish, Esper Sentinel. So quite a lot of soldiers. It's interesting how it's sort of all come together for this. And to round this all off, we've got three Wastelands to try and disrupt our opponent and keep them off balance so that we can finish the game with our aggro before they get to stabilise or do the bonkers thing they're doing. Because people can do pretty crazy things in Legacy. Sideboard-wise, what are we looking at? Well, we've got some more humans for you. Orzov of Pontiff. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this one, when it enters the battlefield or the creature it haunts dies, choose one. You can either pump all your guys or you can shrink all your opponent's guys. Now what haunt means is when this guy dies, you sort of exile it and put it behind um, a creature. It could be any creature. And then when that creature dies, then you're going to get the other effect. So it's a bit of an oldie, but it's a classic card that people used to play back in the day. And it certainly makes some sense here. Not necessarily sure it's the best thing we could be doing, but... It's interesting to me, at least. We've got some Meddling Mage. So against combo decks, we need a way of disrupting them because they can probably race our aggro. This is going to slow them down by a number of turns, whether we're naming something like Doomsday or Show and Tell or whatever. And we have some Night Clovers. This is just a way of shrinking your opponent's creatures again. So if our opponent's going to be a deck with a bunch of creatures, we need to be able to get those creatures out of play or at least make them so that our creatures can attack into them. Hence the Night Clover and the Pontiff. Then we have four Fairy Macabre for some Graveyard Hate against the sort of turn one combo decks of like Reanimator and Utsal Spells, that sort of thing. We've got a bit of Artifact and Enchantment Destruction in this Cathar Commando, which is also a Soldier. And we have a Lorana the Third Path, which isn't a Soldier, but we do have some synergy using our Caracas with it, so we can keep replaying it. And that's pretty much it. We want to attack our opponent in a rather aggressive fashion with 
minimal disruption through things like Esper Sentinel and Thalia, and occasionally move, removing one of their creatures and just keep beating until they die. Good old fashioned aggro, basically. So let's get to it. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe once you finish watching, and why not check out the Patreon linked in the description below. Let's jam some humans in Legacy. All right, we're into round one. This is our opening hand. We can play our spells. Seems good to me. We've got one drop into two drop into two drop wasteland. I'll keep that. Our creatures will be uncountable because of Cavern of Souls. Crashing Footfalls has entered the exile zone. Okay. We'll name human. I think we are getting the champion of the parish out here first. This is a creature that can outscale the rhinos as well. So we want to get that up and running. We're probably going to cast the Thalia next turn. Because that's going to slow our opponent down, hopefully. Wood Foothills. Okay. Let's play Unclaimed Territory. Name human again. We'll play this Uncountable Thalia. Let's see if they've got a Cascade spell in response. The Violent Outburst here. And they can make some rhinos. They did not make the rhinos here. Alright. We go attacks here. They could have double um, spirit guys to pay for their Thalia, but they didn't, so that's good. So next turn we're looking at Wasteland and Coppercoat Vanguard. Which has got two counters right now. There's a Scalding Tarn. Let's take out their red source. Let's cast this. Another uncountable human. It's gonna pump our existing humans. So we're attacking for seven now. Just classic aggro things. I imagine our opponent's hand probably has some amount of counter spells in it that we've managed to blank here, which is why things seem to be going so swimmingly. Things can definitely go wrong for us from here, though. Next turn, they're going to get some rhinos. If they didn't make some guys with three mana, they're not going to make them with three mana this turn. All right, so we got a nice quick win there. Uh, this is pretty good against Crashing Footfalls. We just named Crashing Footfalls, and then that's the end of that chapter. So we can do that. Our opponent's not going to be playing many creatures, so I don't think this... Palace Jailer is that useful. It's kind of setting up for failure, I think, doing that. I don't mind the enlistment officer. These ones are a bit bit better as removal goes, in my view. What are we supposed to remove for our last card? I'm tempted to remove some Hierarchs. But if we're putting in two drops, are we supposed to remove two drops? I don't think so. I think we can strip out a couple of Hierarchs here. See that? Or maybe it's the enlistment officers. Maybe they're just going to be too slow here. Keep our curve nice and low. Yeah, let's try this one. This game's probably going to be over relatively quickly one way or the other. We could get Minsk and Boo type stuff jamming us up, which is another reason why I'm not so big on the Palace Jailer. They can play Brazen Borrower. They can put some Rhinos in at instant speed. These sorts of things are going to jam us up. Okay. We got Thalia again, which is a really important piece in this matchup. So we're going to keep this. I imagine it's going to be a very important piece in most matchups. Are they going to turn one us? If it's Violent Outburst, I'll do it on our turn. We actually have a piece of removal if we need it, so that's interesting. If we can draw another land, that'd be interesting, because that means we can Wasteland and Champion next turn, if that's the thing we want to do. All right, here's the Violent Outburst that I thought might happen. So we're going to get two Rhinos. We can beat the two Rhinos. It's what comes along with it in latter turns that is the problem. Multiple Rhinos after this could be a problem. Uh, we've got one of them checked with our Sigrid in a couple of turns. We can take a little bit of damage here, that's fine. Not ideal, but we'll live with it. If they make a second Crashing Footfalls, I don't think we win there. Right, so we'll play this, naming Human. So we have both of their threats answered here. So let's try and make it more difficult for them to play more of these things. So we'll grow our little champion. So next turn we can play a First Strike person, get rid of one of their Rhinos, and then double block their... Other Rhino with two first strikers. So we're going to take eight this turn, which could be a problem. But I think this if this uh, block comes off for next turn, then we're fine. Yep, let's go to four. This is actually going to be slightly better than a Brutal Cathar this time, which is unusual in my experience. I think we don't attack with a champion this turn in case something goes wrong. To make our opponent think that maybe we've got an answer to one, but maybe not two. Counter spell can blow us out here. We don't have a chalice. Uh, sorry, not a chalice, a cavern. Ascending in the clowns. Let's try this. This doesn't work. We are pretty dead. Got force for this opponent. They do. So we can soak up three damage, but then we're dead. So we will concede the game. So they had the turn one, which is a little bit unfortunate for us, but I think what we're doing here is still fine. 
make a turn two meddling mage and really jam our opponent up. I'm not a particular fan of these crashing footfalls decks. I don't think they're particularly good. Okay, so we've got turn two meddling mage, but we have no one drop. But I think we can keep this. Place on human and pass. So if they turn one us again, then sure, we're going to have a bad time. But if we can just play the meddling mage, then we're going to be in a better spot. Play a secluded courtyard. Name human for white and blue. We'll play a meddling mage. Let's see if this works. They're going to make a guy. In they're going to make two rhinos in response. Feels like they are. I think we just lose to this. I once described this crashing footfalls deck as the worst deck in Legacy. So it's upsetting to me if we lose to this. But there we go. All right. So they're violent outbursting us right now. We still have to name crashing footfalls. I think here. Just to stop us getting hit by any more of them. All right, we've got to take eight here. Be a good time to draw some uncounterable ways of removing creatures. That is not one of them. These are both the same, aren't they? Sure. Human. Hmm. What is the play here? I think it's play the Adeline. Attack with Meddling Mage. Get a token. And then... Use our general Kudro to make our Adeline be able to beat one of these in combat, and then we have to soak up the other damage for the turn. A little bit tricky if our opponent has like other spells, which is certainly a thing that their deck can eventually do. Then we'll be in a little bit of trouble, but I think we just have to take the eight here and try not to get wrecked by whatever comes next. Human. Now we can play double Copper Coat Vanguard. What does that actually do for us? That doesn't help us here. I think it has to be the general. Reason being, this makes our Adeline have an additional point of toughness, which is going to be really key here. Might as well exile this Crashing Footfalls. I don't think that's going to be relevant. And I think we attack with our Meddling Mage, and then we can use the token and the general Kudro if we need to, to block. And I'll exile this. Sure. It's getting five damage in here. So we can block with the Adeline, and then we can block with the General Kudro, take one. Oh, that, that will make us lose our Adeline, though. So we can block with a human token and take two, and then I think we're okay after that. Endurance, does that change the clock? It's going to change how we have to block this turn. But we do have another General Kudro. A land is good for us, and a spell is good for us, probably. So we are losing our Meddling Mage here, though. But they can't play a Crashing Footfalls right now anyway. So it's awkward, but we can we can certainly live through this position we are in right now. How many of our creatures have to go under the various buses is the question. Because when the general Kudro dies, our Adeline will only have four toughness then. So if this blocks a Rhino, we kind of lose it there. If they've got a Minsk and Boo, we just lose, but let's see how many guys... They should attack with everything, I think. We might be able to get them on the backswing with these two copper coats if they don't attack. Or if they attack wrong. The activated ability of General Kudro is not nothing either. I think they're going to settle on attack with all of their guys. And then we're going to go to blocks. So if we block here and then block this on this, we take three damage and go to one. It's not pretty. But we clear a threat off the board from our opponent here. Okay. If they've got... The ability to do another crashing footfalls then sure they'll get us the question here is is it better to make two of these or is it better to make the one general that is an interesting choice for us so we have so this can block here so we need to soak up four toughness so we can do that with general kudro and a human token but we'll lose our guy if we play two copper coats that's four toughness right there so this is worth five toughness three and then the pu the pumps it gets I think we are supposed to cast a general here. We should have drawn another land this turn. That would have been the best draw for us. Or a one drop would have also been fine. Exile this endurance. Go attack. This has got vigilance, so this is coming in. We get a 2 2. We've got brazen borrower. Another endurance. So this can gobble our little guy. And we can't win here now, right? Because this. They attack with all their guys. We can't block the eight trample. So we can block one of these. We can block this. We can block this. We take one still and die if they attack with everything. Yeah. Us not hitting a land there cost us this game. Or hitting a one drop. A one drop creature would have also been fine here. 
because it would be a 2-2 underneath the general. All right, they just got it all. Sure. All right, we lost to the deck that I like to call the worst deck in Legacy. Not a great start to the league, but let's move on. All right, our opening hand for this game is fine. We got some one drops. We got a bit of mana disruption. We got the, the vial. We can keep this. Our opponent is on the play, though. A Mox Diamond. An Urza Saga. A Sphere of Resistance. All right. If we can get this Ether Vial into play, it's going to be good. But that might be difficult. I don't think we get to waste Alan's as a saga. But maybe we have to. Yeah, this is ugly. I think our opponent is more or less won this game already with that turn one sphere. Let's see if we can find a land. Alright, so we stop the construct tokens. We've got a Sylvan Library. That's a pretty strong card. Alright. We can't play any spells. But if we can find a land, we can deploy the Ether Vial. I just don't think we beat the Urza Saga train. And they can also get a Pithy Needle for our Ether Vial that way. So I think we had to waste on that right there. It's unfortunate. They didn't draw any extra cards. Oh, another one. Yikes. I guess at least it wasn't a wasteland. Can we draw a land? We cannot draw a land. Alrighty then. This game is mostly over, I would say. What are we going to discard here? Yikes. That's probably the Noble Hierarch. But we have just bricked here. We are probably done in a few turns. As a saga kills very quickly these days, so they've already got two artifacts in play as well. So they're going to be like five fives by the time they start attacking us. If they find a wasteland, we can concede. I think because we're not going to beat Urza Saga plus wasteland here. Rishdan Port. All right, that's basically the same thing, isn't it? I think we just scoop that up there. No need to keep playing that one. Our opponent has more than stabilised that board. So we're looking at landsy type stuff. So I think this is where we're going to want. Um, a little bit of disruption for Urza Saga and things like that. This is probably all we're looking for. What are these cards going to replace? I think Palace Jailer is probably going to be quite good here in a lot of ways. Sigrid, I think we can probably trim. Uh, how good is the Thalia against lands? It's not that good, to be honest. It's not like we're powering it out. Yeah, I don't think we want this. I guess maybe this and Sphere together can do some stuff, but they can just ignore us and just play land. So I think we'll probably trim these Thalias for Cathar Commandos. We could play some Meddling Mages and name things like Crop Rotation and Life of the Malone. Yeah, I think I'll have some Meddling Mages instead of Thalias here. But if we can keep like looping a Loran, we can keep the Urza Sagas from just enveloping us. Not feeling very confident about this one. Lands decks are designed to chew up and spit out creature decks pretty easily. So, I think we might be getting chewed up here. We're pretty low on basic lands. We don't really have a lot going for us. I guess the plus side from that game, if there is one, is that our opponent didn't really see much of our decks. They might not necessarily know what we're battling with. They saw, like, Caracas and our um, Noble Hierarch. Oh, we will keep his hand. We have an Aether Vile, which is an essential card for playing this game out. I think the Wasteland is actually going to be more important to us than the Caracas here. So we're going to lean out on Caracas. If that gets Wasteland, at least we can deal with like a Glacial Chasm or a Maze of Ith or something that's going to really jam us up, like uh, as a Saga or something. If our opponent has their main deck, Pith and Needle in hand now, then we're going to have a real bad time. It's an Exploration. They're going to follow up with the Wasteland. They are going to follow up with the waste, And they're going to Wasteland us. Okay. Not the best of times for us. We'll play out our land. Question is, do we want to play this now and get something like uh, Noble Hierarch into play? So, so, well, we wouldn't do it now. We could do a an Esper Sentinel now. So that if our opponent casts any spells, we might get to draw a card. Or we can play the Noble Hierarch to guarantee us additional mana so we can double spell next turn. Those are our options. Hmm. I think I'm going to try and get the extra card here. So if we draw a land that produces white mana, which is virtually every land in our deck bar the two wastelands, then we can cast a Thalia's Lieutenant and then Violin the Noble Hierarch. Maze of Ith. Dark Depths. All right. Not a very friendly selection of cards, truth be told. Put the trigger on stack. We have to make the decision now. If you want to put in the Noble Hierarch, I think we're just going to 
tick this up and put in the Fowler's Lieutenant. We kind of need to hold this wasteland up now. Meddling Mage. Okay, that's an interesting one. Uh, they're just going to get rid of this one, aren't they? So I think we're just going to pass here. We could put in a Meddling Mage now and shut off. I think I will do that. I think we'll shut off their Life of the Maloma here. Uh, not Life of the Maloma, Crop Rotation. So this should hopefully stop them from being able to assemble the combo. We do still have a Wasteland. And we can attack for two next turn. There's a Wasteland. Are they going to Wasteland our Wasteland? They are. We are... <clears throat> are we trying to get rid of the Dark Depths here? Are we trying to get rid of the Maze? I think we just need to get them dead. There's an Urza Saga. Yep. That's clearly the prize for them. Are they going to pay? I imagine they are. Yep, there it is. Um... And I think we'll activate this with two. Well, it's still got two counters on. Or we can kill this. Uh, no, we already. We could have got rid of the Urza Saga. We can get rid of the Urza Saga next turn if we need to. But this is the highest damage we can output right now. Yeah, the other option there was tick up to three and around on the third path and get rid of the Urza Saga. But we only played one land last turn. So we'll need another mana source here for the. Actually, no, they played two lands and they played the Wasteland as well. Right, it looks like they're just life in the loaming here. Okay, we get a free card. Oh my god, a land. Doesn't actually cast our spell. It's the only land... Actually, no, there's, there's two lands in our deck that... that wow, well, two lands plus Wasteland that don't cast Hierarch, but yeah. Alright, so we're getting a Tiger. Getting another Exploration. Okay. There's a Wasteland. There's a Mazelith. Okay. We will not be activating. We will not be putting counter on. Champion of the Parish. This weirdly does stuff. Uh, which isn't the most common of occurrences. But pumps our guys. Well, pumps this guy. And we can go to attacks. So this is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, minus 4 is 6. So this is 6 damage we can do if we put in the general. Or we can put in the, the Ran and take out this as a Saga. And stop them getting anything that way. Let's see if they do anything here. Maze of thing that one. We put in the general. Get rid of life from the loam. We pump our two guys. This gives us a much bigger hit of damage than they were expecting. This way, if they're relying on making a creature with their as a saga to block, we can then blow it up as a surprise now. The one downside here is if they get pithing needle. No, I think it's close between whether we get the, the Loran there or not. I guess we can get a little bit rocked by something like Tabernacle, but I don't think we're beating Tabernacle regardless. It's tough. This could get Expedition Map, I suppose, and if they've got a land. Yeah, maybe we're supposed to land that. Yeah, so they're going to go and crack this, get the Tabernacle. Yeah, we, we punted this game, I think. Hmm. So put all these triggers on the stack. Are we... Hmm... Should our guys do we save? Does it matter? They have a Maze of Ith, Cam uh, they have a Maze of Ith and Tabernacle. Yeah, we punted this game. This is on us. We should have uh, Lorand and blown up the Urza uh, Saga. I was talking about doing that and I just decided to go for the big damage for some silly reason there. Whether or not we win that game, I don't know. We might still lose it, but I think that was... We just played that one horribly and that's on us. I think we still lose this matchup overall, but... Punting like that was pretty embarrassing. Let's go to the next round. Uh, yeah, we can keep this. We make our stuff out. Our opponent is Grindstone Cowboy. I think last time I played them, they were unsurprisingly on a Painted 7 deck. Name Human. Quarry the Vile. And carry on with our lives. There's Mountain, an Ancient Tomb. Fable the Mirror Breaker. Yep, pretty good. Let's put Counter on our Aether Vile. Not draw a land. Slightly annoying. Um, what are we supposed to put in here? I think it's the. We put in the champion, obviously, but I'm just trying to work out if we want the noble hierarch or the Esper Sentinel to come in next. I think it's the Sentinel here. Our opponent's discarding some cards with Fair Mirror Breaker. Portal to Phyresis. Well, if that gets into play, we're certainly not having a great time. A Painter Servant. Sure. They're going to name blue, so their Pyroblast has switched on. Yep. It's over to us. Oh no, they're going to attack first. 
shorts. Let's get some treasures so they can pyroblast and hold up the one mana for the Esper Sentinel. There's a pyroblast. Targeting our champion of the parish. We lose our guy. We're getting absolutely bodied here. Doesn't feel like we're playing the same format as our opponents. And then Wasteland as well. Wasteland is very unusual to see our painted decks. And then we're going to throw out a Noble Hierarchy. I think we're going to... Oh, oh, um, I think we just need a Thalia in play right now. This one does not enjoy the uh, being changed colour. It's got all funny looking. Okay, alright. Our opponent's got a lot of taxing effects they have to pay. But if they're winning the game, they don't really care about that. So if they've got a Grindstone and another Ancient Tomb, then we die. At least we have a First Striker to stop the Shaman taken. Okay, they would need something like a uh, Simon Spirit Guide to win the game now. Plateau. Goblin Engineer. Sure, so this can get Portal to Faris's next turn. Which will kill us. There's a Grindstone, that will also kill us. Uh, okay. We are very, very dead. The only way we win this game, or the only way we don't lose this game, is if we Parith Vile up to three and draw the general so we can exile the thing they target. Secluded Courtyard. It's not really the one, is it? Uh, I guess we'll pay green and play this guy. Mm. Yeah, our opponent has us dead every which way. All right, they're just going for it here. Let's see if they actually try and grind us. They might fear something like a Lorana the third path here. Nope, they're just going for it, sure. We didn't have anything. So, we also have the outs of drawing the guys that kill stuff. But, alas, was not to be. Uh, I think these cards are going to be useful here. I'm not convinced I want these Palace Jailers, because they're just going to be a bit of a liability, because our opponent can definitely punish us with a bunch of creatures. Sigrid, not so useful here either, I don't think. All right. Like, we could be boarding in some meddling mage and stuff, but it just feels like there's too much core for our deck. All right, we're going to... Um, Aethervile was kind of like mana ramp, so we need to keep that in our deck. All right, we'll keep this. We got one drop into two one drops into some other stuff. Now, our opponent's going to have a bunch of fury in their deck now, as well as who knows what else. Probably lightning bolts. It's going to be a tough sell for us to, to win this one, I would imagine. But not impossible. Let's play this on human. Let's play champion of the parish. Let's play this one. Pumps both of our champions. And we can attack with our first champion for four. Not bad, attacking for four on turn two. Next turn we can deploy Thalia. If we draw land we can deploy Thalia and Coppercoat Vanguard. Then I think we probably are going to be in an incredibly strong position. Fail the Rick. Sure, don't care about that one. Not yet anyway. Cathar Commande. Is that a thing we want here? We can flash this at instant speed, or we can just make this Copper Coat Vanguard and just make our guys better immediately. Or we could play an Athalia here and use this. Uh, we could always Brutal Cathar away their Goblin Shaman token. And be guaranteed to connect for the most amount of damage possible. I think I like that one slightly more. It's also the more mana efficient play for future turns. So if we uh, take their, if we play a Thalia, then they can always attack if they really need that mana for something. Whereas this way they can't do that. So our opponent is dead on our next combat step. And we have a piece of removal for artifact based lines with the Cathar Commando. And we have Coppercoat Vanguard if we just need more damage. It turns our Hierarch into a threat. All right, we got it there. Can we do that on the draw? Who knows? But we're going to give it a shot. Uh, this hand is all lands. We will throw this one back. Now we might be able to cheese them with double wasteland and Thalia, but I don't think that's what our deck's supposed to do. We've got a nice curve. We can keep this. I don't think we need to keep both of our lands here. We have seen wasteland out of our opponent, but if we keep these and draw another land, then we're in a bad state. But if we keep these and uh, if we keep what we've got here and draw a land, then we'll be okay. And this is kind of a mana source on its own anyway. All right, name human. There we go, there's the land. Instantly rewarded. Make a hierarch. So next turn, we can make Adeline. This is pretty strong. Swords to Plowshares. All right, we're not doing that next turn then. Understood. 
There's a goblin engineer. Sure. They're going to get something exciting here. An ensnaring bridge. We do have answers to this in our deck. But the time it will buy our opponent is not nothing. Right, let's name human. So what are we playing here? Are we playing the copper coat vanguard. I think it is the vanguard. Hits for slightly more. And it means when our Thalia's Lieutenant comes in, it has an instant impact. We're probably going to play the Adeline next. And then we can play the Thalia's Lieutenant to go wide. We would rather go wide than tall against the Ensnaring Bridge. So that's what we're going to try and use the Thalia's Lieutenant for. A Welder, okay. So this can actually put in the portal uh, to Phyrexia, whereas the Goblin Engineer can't. Well, you don't have that in their graveyard yet, but it's something to worry about for the future. Right. Let's name human on this one. Let's get this Adeline going. Feels like they're thinking about lightning bolting our creature in response. All right, so we attack with this. If they double block, they'll still take the one. All right, they're just going to pay the ward one anyway. And plow Adeline. I don't think it's worth trading the Copper Coat Vanguard. If we were getting the token out of it at the same time, I think sure. But that's not the case. Because the token would at least be doing something and bashing them for two or whatever. This guy on its own, it would trade for one of their goblins, and that's not good enough when they have two. Khan, the great creator, okay. That doesn't really stop what we're trying to do right now. But they do have an artifact that they can weld. Here comes the ensnaring bridge. So they can just tick this up as they see fit. They can go and get liquid metal coating now and then start wastelanding us effectively. Let's see what they get here. Tormod's Crypt. Right, this is a zero drop. I suspect that's why they've got it, so their hand can stop our Copper Coat Vanguard from attacking. Now, our Copper Coat Vanguard here is slightly awkward in this current situation. I will play this out. We'll name Human. Uh, all right, I'm going to play out the Sentinel here. Right, we're not going to win this game without removing this Ensnaring Bridge, so we're doing it this way around. So we put more counters on our Esper Sentinel, so they have to pay more mana or make us draw cards. So this is going to draw, meaning they have to pay three whenever they play a non-creature spell. Which means that we're more likely to draw cards, which might draw us into Loran on the third path, which we can then machine gun down the permanence with the Karaka. So we've got. So we've got a strategy. Is it going to work? Probably not. Well, they do have a Khan on board, so they can certainly get lots of good scary things. Okay. So if they've got a Painted Servant in their sideboard, they can win the game in a few turns. Alright, they're getting another artifact. And they're going to pay the full cost so we don't get to draw a card. I suspect they probably are. All right. They did not pay fully. They only paid... So they put two mana into their pool and then let the soul guide happen. That's interesting to me. Removing their own source of plowshares. I think they forgot that it was three, maybe? I don't know why they float that mana otherwise. Play this. We will draw a card. Ether Vial is something, isn't it? Pay this guy. Pumps our Thalys Lieutenant. Not really what we want. And play our ether vial. Yep. So they're building up for a Mycosynth Latin to turn soon. Where they can just shut down everything we're doing. Now ether vial doesn't do anything underneath the calm. But if we can get rid of the bridge, we can then unlock our vial. And it's not doing anything in our hand. It's not as if we can brainstorm it away. Are you going to pay three mana for your Lotus Petal opponent? Or do we get to draw a card and hopefully find a Loran of the third path? Thalys Lieutenant. Okay. That's not really doing it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Paint his servant. Okay, so next turn they can grindstone us to oblivion. They've chosen black, which is interesting. Okay, so we have one turn to draw something that removes this painted servant, or we die. Not the best of times. Oh no, we're we getting a fury. A backup can't. Okay. It's just to make sure the hand is completely empty. Mike sent lattice, alright? So representing lattice lock next turn as well, because this can find them a uh, mana source. We'll put a counter on this. General Kudro. This doesn't do anything. Our opponent has us dead here. They can either just lattice lock us next turn because they can float five. Uh, go and get another mana source here. Uh, play it. They don't care about the Esper Sentinel us drawing a card. So they can just play that. Or they can just go get Grindstone and grind us out. So we are dead in two different ways there. Yikes. No good. We have got two more rounds. Let's see if we can scrape together... Some wins. We've won a die roll. 
we can play a Hierarch on turn one and then play some other stuff. I think we keep this one. Rather, this was a champion of the parish, but I'll take what we've got. If we could find a one drop for our second turn, that would be nice, because then we can deploy Thalia and a one drop. I guess we could Thalia Wasteland, but that feels a little risky unless we draw another land. Person Human, and Green Mana, Mega Noble Hierarch. Right, over to your opponent. Ancient Tomb. We're going to see a Chalice. A Chrome Mox. What colour are we imprinting? A Fury. Okay. Fable. Magus of the Moon. Okay. Pretty bad news for us, but not the end of the world. We'll deploy Thalia here. Pretty glad we got our Noble Hierarch out. But if they have a Fury, they can pay for Copper Coat Vanguard anyway. But if they kill our Noble Hierarch, we're probably dead. Oh, and red. So this is more... And, and green, sorry. So we're looking at the red-green initiative style deck here, I think. Okay, there's a Chaos Adventurer. Yep, that's pretty good. If we can get the initiative, though, we can get our basic out of our deck, which will allow us to cast this Palace Jailer. We can actually attack with our Thalia next turn. Because it will have, it'll be a three-power guy. So this is interesting to me. So I think we go to attacks. So this will be a 3-2. So I can double block it if they want to. Right, we're going to first strike the Kaiser Chaos Adventure down. Okay. Play this one out. I think we're on the Copper Coat Vanguard. Right, our opponent can stash up here if they... Uh, not stash up, forge up here if they want to. But if we get to cast this... Palace Jailer onto a board that only has one creature on. We are going to be in incredible shape. Now, at any point they find a Fury, we lose the game. But, you know, that's what Fury does, isn't it? So, we are nothing but a little creature deck. We certainly have our weaknesses. Uh! Sure, what do they kill here? Oh, wait, no, they're killing everything. It's just the wards popped up. Uh, yeah, I think we can probably call it a day there, can't we? We can't cast any of our spells. Yikes. Um... How do we beat the prism deck? Well, it's not really a prism deck, is it? It's like the initiative deck. So it is a creature deck, but like our minus ones and stuff don't seem great here. Are, they, are we just running it back here? I think we might be running it back. Like, there's an argument for some of these things, for what our opponent could have. But like, we could have kept playing that game and hoped to draw an ether vial. That's the one thing we could potentially do, but our opponent has the initiative at that point, so. We're going to, they're going to uh, go through the Throne of Dead 3 before we got to do anything there. Oh my god, we have our basic land. Alright, I'll keep this. We've got a pretty good curve. We've got one, two, three. We can take out a Magus. Our opponent might mulligan heavily to a Magus because of how good it is against our deck. Let's go play a Champion of the Parish and pass the turn. There's a basic mountain from our opponent. Hopefully, this Thalia will do some reasonable work. This on human. We'll cast a Stalia. Pumps our champion. If they didn't cast anything for one mana, it means they're probably. I guess they can have a soul land and have a two drop or something. But this is an okay spot. Next turn, we can hold up Caracas for our own Thalia, play the Copper Coat Vanguard, bash for four, five, six, seven. And then we have lethal on the next turn if our opponent can't deploy any uh, threats or ways of stopping us. Not bad. Fury. Alright. We are dead, I think. This card is just so brutal against us. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, our things. And now they can deploy something exciting. A Maze of the Moon. That's not so bad for us. I think we'll play this now for mana efficiency's sake. It means next turn we can hopefully double spell. But yeah, our opponent is in a very favourable position here. They got rid of our initial creatures. And now we're left with a 3-mana 2-2. Two, two. And we know they've got really scary creatures in their deck. Like all the initiative guys outclass what we're doing here. Now we do make our guy a, what, a 4-3 on attacks. But they can maintain the initiative quite easily here. Yep. It still doesn't have first strike, does it? No. A Noble Hierarch. That is interesting. So this puts, if we put a counter on here, this becomes a 3-3. Three, three. We play the Hierarch, it becomes a 4 4, but it still dies to Chaos of Chaos Adventure. It is very much tough out there. I think I'd rather have a counter on the Copper Coat than have 
um, a Thalia with a counter uh, coming in with another counter. Uh, okay. This will pump our stuff. Are we attacking with our 4 3 here? <clears throat> if we trade out, then our opponents got will get the makes of the moon back. They can put two counters on it, and then it will be bigger than our things and be able to attack us anyway. We can trade a copper coat for a Kozak House Adventure if they don't forge it. Oh, yikes. I think if we trade these, they get the Magus back. We don't get to cast the spell in our hand, which we might be relying on to make our guy big enough. Because we can make our guy big enough to beat a freshly played initiative threat this turn. Our opponent is just so far ahead here. They're playing all these powerful cards, and we're playing, like, two mana 2-2s two and three mana 2-2s. Two Yikes. A Minskin Boo. We do have the Caracas to check that. So let's see how this turn pans out. Are they just going to attack with the boo? Are they going to immediately sacrifice it to do one damage to Arthalia's lieutenant? I don't mind that, to be honest. That could have gone a lot worse for us. Are they going to attack us here or are they going to hold back on blocks? Hold them back on blocks. So we can get a green mana out here for this guy. That gives us a 5-4 on attacks if we want it. Then we have this. We attack them with both. Ah, it's not both, is it? It's just the copper coat, I think. I'll trade this for a Chaos, Chaos of Chaos Adventurer. We've got the Minskin Boo covered. I'm going to goad one of our creatures. Okay. We're not going to bounce this just yet. We're going to wait until we need to. In case our opponent makes a mistake. Forgetting that we have the Caracas up. Right, we'll bounce it now. I'm going to cast Fury here and absolutely rock our world again. Another Chaos of Chaos Adventure, sure. Are they going to draw a card or make a spooky skeleton? Both are reasonable options. I'd probably take the skeleton here, but there we go. They've gone for the skeleton. Okay. A Copper Coat Vanguard. What does that do for us here? We're going to get this Megas of the Moon back. I think we have to attack Minsk and Boo with both of these creatures awkwardly. First strike on Fowler is pretty good here. Okay. Are we sacking this clearing? I think so. Right, we'll deploy another guy. We have two white sources, so we can cast them at like a palace jailer. But our opponent is going into Throne of the Dead 3. If they find a Fury, we lose the game pretty easily. Uh, no Fury, but they can have a Chaos of Chaos Adventurer, or they can have the Vigilance guy, which is probably better actually. Yeah, they've, got, they've agreed with me, and I've gone for the Undermountain Adventurer. So they have this Minsk and Boo. So they're going to have a 4-4 guy that can attack us if it wants. Honestly, I don't know what we're supposed to do here. Our opponent's deck's just got so much, so many much better cards than us. It feels like we're playing like standard, and our opponent's playing Legacy, and it's not great. All right, Minsk and Boo gets bigger. Uh, I guess we're not blocking here. It's not really going to help us out, is it? A wasteland. What does this do? Nothing. I don't see how we can win this game. I'm just going to concede it. Yeah, we are getting absolutely annihilated by everyone at the moment. Um, I'm genuinely amazed that this deck managed to go 5-0. Alright, we got one more round. Let's see if we can dodge the 0-5. I don't know if I've actually had an 0-5 on the channel before, so let's hope that we don't get one now. Alright. Our opening hand is pretty bad. We're going to mulligan this one. Okay, we've got Ether Vial. That's one of our best cards. You know, this is like the best stuff that our deck does, right? We have removal, we have pump, we have a little bit of disruption for their mana. We have to choose one of these to go, though. What is it going to be? I think we want to keep the two one drops. I guess it's probably General Kudro that goes here. All right, there's a saga. So this is a single card that's going to outclass most of the creatures that we play on its own. Bit worrying. Feels like we're in the eight cast ballpark, but it could be Mono Black Saga Storm. All right, we're into eight cast. Are they the painter variant or the just standard build? I haven't done anything to show us that yet, just yet. Giveaway cards are obviously the painter combo cards, metallic rebuke, and chalice of the void. All right, let's play this. Name human. I think we need to play out our ether vial here. Like, it just doesn't feel like we're doing anything, right? Ottawara. So our opponent's going to make a creature much bigger than any of the creatures in our deck. And they're also probably going to pith and needle our Vile soon as well. Alright, let's put in a Champion of the Parished. Let's play a Champion of the Parished. Play this. 
and play an Esper Sentinel. Okay, we've made some stuff. It's turn two. We've made six power, and that power is going to grow with a Thalys Lieutenant. We also have a removal spell for one of the Saga Tokens. They didn't make a Saga Token on their previous turn, so we only have to worry about one right now. Pith Needle is going to name the Aether as we suspected. Now, the 8-cast deck isn't known for having removal. And they didn't make a token either. Sigh when we have an active Caracas is certainly a choice. Another Saga. Please don't play any artifacts. We thought Monitor or something. Chalice of the Void. Are you going to pay for this? Doesn't look like you're paying. Oh, we got a free card that doesn't do anything. Exciting. Um, Alright. Problem here is... If we put in the Hierarch... No, we're, we're, no, we're fine actually. Yeah, yeah, we're fine here. Yeah. I know what we're doing. Uh, we're not going to put in the Hierarch. If we find a Cavern, we can play it, but... Alright, so we don't get, the, get that right now. Uh, we do get to put in... This Uncountable Thales Lieutenant. Pump our guys. Oh, they've named the Caracas with the Pithnido, haven't they? Of course. Sorry about that one. Uh, which means we can deploy this Naval Hierarch right now. Into the Chalice, of course. That's, what am I doing? Uh, so we can attack with these two guys. Some damage. Oh, I'm playing so sloppily here. We will put Charge Counter on because we have a 3-drop that we'd like to put in. We're kind of doing alright. How big is this going to be? Quite large. But this is whenever you cast an artifact spell. So the fact that we have a human to put in here is going to be pretty good. Sure, you can have a, a guy. Before you go to blocks, we're going to exile this construct token. Now, our opponent didn't play a bunch of artifacts last turn. They haven't got much in the way of cards in hand. This means all our guys will live through combat here. They can block the biggest one if they want. All right, what are they going to block? Just one of the two twos. So they're going to take a whole bunch here. We have many lethal threats here. And we get to put this palace shader in next turn and get rid of this construct token. And it's going to be uncounterable. They've got another pithy needle for our Aethervale. I think they should have put the pithy needle on the Aethervale personally. Instead of the Caracas. That's why I was very surprised when our Caracas didn't work earlier. But our Aethervale did, so that's good. Alright, okay, this is how they can start things going nicely for them. We do have a Moon Rage Brute, but this is probably getting flipped now. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to get an Emery here. They got some guys. Uh, so we get to exile a guy here. Then we'll get rid of this Construct Token. Because it's flipping back. Alright, we're, we're on course to winning a game. Which is incredible. Right, let's play this one out because it pumps our other guys. So, what is this? This can take out their 2 2 after we attack. Sure. Some Palace Jailer. Get rid of their 2 2. Alright, they're scooping up because we have a whole bunch of stuff. Alright. We just need to do that again. So, Cathar Commando is going to be pretty good here. I don't actually like Palace Jailer because they have so many little guys that we have to worry about. That's not really going to be very good for us. This is probably a matchup where the Knight Clubbers and Orzov Pontiff actually look good as well. So, these are the things I'm interested in having. We need to find the slots to fit them in. This enlistment officer feels like a joke to me. I don't think we're ever realistically casting it. It hasn't felt good. Like, it's something I've been wanting to board out in most games. Thala is pretty decent here. Uh, the Brutal Cathars and things are nice because we can exile tokens that just never come back. Uh, I like the Ether Vial most of the time here. Yeah, it's going to be tough to find out what we cut here. Maybe it's the general Kudros that go. Because we're bringing another three drops, so we probably want to be trying to cut through the three drop slot as much as we can. We're not going to be targeting our guys that much, so I think we can trim on the Vanguard. All right, we're trying to kill their Thopters and just make some guys. We need, we do need to hit three mana in these games. Uh, one drop, two drop, three drop. That's a curve. We'll keep it. We will need to find some land for this. We also have an answer to as a saga. All right, how much nonsense are they going to throw out on turn one? Here's a Mishra's Bauble. Alright, that was it. Not so bad. Play this out. Name human. Let's play a little champion of the parish. Alright. So next turn we can deploy Thalia's Lieutenant. I don't think we can afford to waste Anna Saga yet, which is a little bit of an issue. Because we need our mana to actually operate on this game. We don't have any sort of um, 
ether vial type shenanigans going on. All right, let's go for Thalia. This means that their constructors are probably going to be slightly smaller. Straight up force of will, pitching thought monitor. Not too shabby. Get our singular point of damage in. We can drop a Thalia next turn. Why aren't we playing Kataki? I know it's not a human, but feels like it would be a good place to be. Psy, Master Thopterist. Oh, uh, okay. So there was Sandbag and some zeros. Let's go with this guy. Nightclubber, looking pretty good. So I don't get to make a token here, which is interesting. We could just take them off of blue mana here, and hmm, but then they can go and get the Mox anyway. Hmm, bit of a tough one. I think we are just deploying this because they're clearly struggling a bit with their mana. We're not attacking here, they can double block and we can just trade with a Thopter and that's no good. But if we can deploy Nightclubber or Adeline next turn, we can really do some work. Because Adeline is two pumps for the champion of the parish. See to the Synod, I'm glad we didn't do any Wasteland these shenanigans there. Thought Monitor is pretty strong. Nightclubber is going to do some work for us this game. Or rather, it has to do some work for us. Doesn't really matter if we don't draw any land though. Um, is it Thalia's Lieutenant here? I think it is. Like, we could deploy the Hierarch and not do anything else. So, if I attack with this, they can block with all of these and trade here. I think we're just going to try and save up for a big Nightclubber time. If we can blitz in the Nightclubber, it's going to be pretty savage for our opponent. Alright, and another as a Saga. This is going to be a bit of an issue for us. It's going to make some large gentlemen that we're going to have to deal with. A thought cast. Yeah, it's pretty good. Thalia doesn't interact very well with affinity stuff. They just have more artifacts out and then they carry on going. Pithing Needle. It's going to name Wasteland. I think that's a sensible thing. You name the face-up thing on the board most of the time. Not that we necessarily want our Wasteland uh, to be sacrificed or anything. We're trying to cast Nightclubber. They're leaving one mana open, which does suggest they have a Force of Will. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't think we can beat Kappa Cannon in here. Yikes. Yeah, this is real bad. They can probably just kill us with that next turn, because all of their artifacts double up for Kappa Cannon air buffs. Whew. All right. If we'd have had this a few turns ago, we might have been okay. So, what is the plan here? If we nightclubber everything away now, that's okay. Do we want to blitz this? I don't think we do. I think we just want to cast it. Yeah, so if we had this turn earlier, our opponent wouldn't have the resources to deploy the Kappa. We do now have the biggest game in town, for this turn at least. And the Adeline will scale our things up quite nicely. It'll put two cannons on the... Lieutenant and the champion on the same time. Yep, there's an artifact. If they play any artifact spells, they're just going to bash him for a little bit here. Is it six? So it's usually a three turn clock if they're just playing one thing a turn. They've got cards in hand, but they're probably just going to deploy this saga. It's going to be a pretty big game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, seven power guy. That's going to be a lot for us to beat. Adeline gives us two tokens if we attack. So this will make this a seven, which won't be big enough to deal with that. Hmm. If we play this and this, this will pump us up to seven, but then it'll be an eight on attacks. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it will be big enough. But they can block with that and the Psy. And then they're going to get another token the following turn. Yuck. How are we supposed to beat this? We can play the Adeline, attack with Nightclubber to get counters on these, and then try and save up for a big turn with Copperco Vanguard next turn. Yuck. I think our opponent has very much turned the corner here. They're going to bounce our Champion of the Parish. We have a Legend, so the Ottawara will cost them less mana. Dismember on our Champion of the Parish. Yeah, that's pretty good. So now we have the question of, do we trade Nightclubber for a 1-1 one, one that dies alongside it, but puts a counter on our Thalia's Lieutenant? I don't think we do. Yuck. I don't know how we're supposed to win this. We don't really have any good cyborg cards for this matchup, really. Like, we've got things that blow up artifacts, but blowing up one artifact against eight cast is pointless, because they have so many. Like, sometimes you can hit the, like, the clutch one at the right moment, 
but you want things like Kataki or Meltdown or Seeds of Innocence, like the big haymakers is how you beat this deck, not trying to blow up one permanent. Okay. How dead are we this turn? So this is going up to, uh, what, 12 this turn? 11, on to 11. You got a land. They're going to equip. Yeah, we can't beat this lifelink. We can't beat that. Jeez. If we'd have hit the land one turn earlier for the nightclub, I think we could win that game because we would have got rid of all the tokens they couldn't make the um, Kappa Cannon here. And we would have got some damage in that turn. All right, I think we're just resubmitting like this. Um, we got Ether Vial, Champion of the Parish. I guess we keep this. Doesn't feel great. But we have an answer to Thopters. We have an answer to a Construct. We have uncountable guys. I think we have to play the Ether Vial out first. Surprise, this didn't get a Force of Will. Felt like they were thinking about it. Because they're not going to be able to counter our humans because of the Cavern anyway. And because of the Ether Vial. So wonder what that pause was. All right. Our deck is full of one drops and two drops. All right. So they got they had the Pithneal in hand for our Ether Vial. Sure. Not great. Sure, I'll put counter on it. Why not? Name human with this. We'll deploy our champion. We'll deploy this Esper Sentinel. To pump our champion. Force of will. Okay, our prince got two cards in hand. One, two, three. I imagine one of them is a thought cast. Feels like they're gonna thought cast this turn. Torpor orb. Okay. That shuts down the other two cards in our hand. Yuck. Card deck is so bad, let's be honest. Alright. A noble hierarch. I guess we're casting you. You do some stuff here, right? You let us attack for two. And our champion of the parish doesn't get bigger because of Torpor Orb. Thought Monitor at least doesn't work for them. Now uh, Kappa Cannoneer is gonna get semi shut off. Artifact creatures won't trigger it, but non artifacts will uh, non creature artifacts will. Oh dear. Is this Kappa Cannoneer? Yuck. And we can't kill it with the Sigrid because of the Torpor Orb. What are we doing in this game? We're just getting absolutely trounced. Caracas. It's a land. Not sure. Hmm. We can play Sigrid and hold up Caracas. Not very exciting, is it? Uh, we can do that instant speed, so there's no need to do it now. We can't attack into the Cannoneer. Gonna get Saga tokens all in our business. If they just get a Shadow Spear and stick it on Cap Cannoneer, I don't know how we're supposed to beat that. All right, white, white, green. How many artifacts do they have here? So Saga token will be one, two, three, four, five in size. That's quite large. All right, so we got our Ethervar. We're not gonna tick it up. Three is the sweet spot for us. If we do get to blow anything of our opponents up. Knight Clubber, what do you do? You blitz. Is blitzing useful for us? Not really. They've got a 5-5. Five five. I guess we just deploy the Pontiff. At least it has a, a trigger that works when stuff dies. But we can't attack because they've got a bigger creature than us. Yeah, not really sure how we're supposed to win this game. We had a we're just the worst version of Merfolk for the most part, is how it feels. Alright. Alright, Cap Cannoneer is getting bigger. If they equip the Shadow Spear, I think we scoop this one up. I don't even think it matters if they equip it or not, to be honest. Yeah, we are done here. Yuck! That is an 0-5 league from humans. Puny humans. Alright, let's talk about the deck. We won three games the entire league. Uh, now, to be fair, it should have been four. We punted a game against lands. So that one is on me. Like, we should have put the uh, Loran in and stopped them getting the expedition map to get the tabernacle. I think that was a huge misplay on our part and definitely cost us. We would have had to go to a third game against lands. Whether or not we win a game three against lands when they're on the play, I'm very skeptical. But... We might have been able to salvage one there. So it could be on me. Maybe this was a 1-4. But it definitely felt like an 0-5. So what's wrong with this deck is the immediate question. This deck to me felt like 
possibly the worst deck I've played in Legacy. Even worse than the, the horrible Rhino deck that I don't think is very good that beat us in round one. Simply put, we're not doing anything powerful at all in our deck, right? So we're trying to curve... Like, we had one game where we curved nicely, like, Champion into Thalia into Adelaine or something, and that was, that was pretty strong. That's a reasonable aggro hand, but it's not that fast, right? Madness is an aggro deck that puts down way more pressure way quicker. So we're not that great on pressure. And our disruption is three wastelands and these Thalias for the most part. That's not a lot of disruption either. So we're not like a Death and Taxes deck where the Death and Taxes deck has... You know, it is an Aether Vile deck, right? But it's an Aether Vile deck that uses its lands while its Aether Vile is ticking up. It's porting you and wastelanding you, Field of Ruining you, whatever. It's doing these things. It's casting various spells along its curve, like Swords to Plowshares and stuff like that, as well as just putting creatures in. We're just trying to put creatures in. And, like, Aether Vile is supposed to be like a mana ramp, but we have to take our turn one off from doing it. So it means we're not attacking until turn three if we're playing an Aether Vile, which feels bad. Maybe we're not supposed to play Aether Vile on turn one, but... It felt like we didn't have enough lands to play some of the spells on our deck quite often as well. I don't know, it's just... There's so many angles that this deck doesn't feel very good to me on. We're not doing anything intrinsically powerful. We have a mana base that is incredibly susceptible to Blood Moon and Wasteland, which can shut down our entire ability to play the game. And the payoff we're getting for it, it's not like we're playing like loads of cool spells from all over the colour. We're basically a black-white deck, right? But we've got all these lands pretty much just for Thali, uh, just for Noble Hierarch and Meddling Mage out of the sideboard. But in order to play these things, it means our mana base is shocking and we can just get absolutely annihilated by a single Mage of the Moon as we saw in one of the games. And we're very exposed to Wastelands, so we're not ever going to get up to cast our three drops. If we don't have the... So we kind of need the Vial to cast our three drops. But the Vial makes our aggro plan a lot worse because we're not tacking very early on. And all of our creatures get outclassed really easily by standard things people are playing, right? Urza Saga is outclassing most of our creatures most of the time. Uh, the initiative creatures are outclassing our creatures very easily. I just don't really know what we're supposed to be good against, is the thing here. It just feels like maybe if we had... Like, I don't really feel we'd be good against control. I don't feel we'd be good against combo. Like, mid rangey decks are just going to have better creatures than us a lot of the time. It just doesn't feel like we our deck does anything that attacks the legacy format in a good fashion. I think that... There's a whole bunch of, like, better humans as well that we could be running. If we wanted to go further up the curve and be a bit more mid-rangey. So we could run things like Season Dungeoneer. That's a very good human card. Um... Case of Chaos Adventurer, if you're really into it. You know, that's just a better human card. We're trying to spam a load of guys and do our thing. I think I mentioned in the last round that we are kind of like a worse version of Merfolk. So Merfolk is a deck that isn't very good, right? It plays a bunch of lords and some guys at Cantrip and have a few little bits of utility here and there. They have the new lord that actually adds a little bit more disruption, giving them four spikes for second guys if they need to. But here's what Merfolk has that we don't. Merfolk has a solid mana base, right? They have a whole bunch of islands, which allows them to have a, uh, a Mutavolt in their mana base, which can obviously threaten and pressure. So their lands can be a bit more useful than ours. They have zero mana interaction in the form of Force of Negation and Force of Will. So they can actually disrupt their opponents solidly instead of just having a Thalia as your only real disruption a lot of the time. Their creatures are similar in size to what we're doing here. You know, the Dream Champion of the Parish Hands can definitely grow out of hand and get you there. But Merfolk's creatures on the whole are kind of similar or larger than what we were putting out today. However, their creatures are unblockable most of the time because of Island Walk, which is an enormous difference. The, the ability to aggro and just turn your guys sideways all the time and not have to worry about trying to navigate your opponent's creatures is massive, right? Like we basically got blown out by an endurance and stuff in games and that feels bad. If you're an aggro deck that can't beat an endurance sometimes, that's a real issue. 
especially since Endurance is, you know, they're everywhere. They're very good against all the graveyard e decks. And they're also good against us here, which is another problem. I'd also say that Merfolk has some just good cards in them as well. Like, like we're basically playing, we're playing one good card, I would say, in Thalia. Thalia is a good card. I think Esper Sentinel is, well, Noble Harak is a good card as well, right? And Esper Sentinel is a pretty reasonable card. You know, it's not going to blow anyone's mind, but it's a pretty reasonable card. It's not on the same level as something like Thalia, but, you know, it's pretty decent. Hierarch is obviously quite good, but we're not really ramping into anything too exciting at the end of the day. And Palace Jailer is one of those cards that can be either good or terrible. It, there's not a lot of wiggle room in the middle, but, you know, it's either going to win you the game or be uncastable or lose you the game. It's kind of the functions it tends to be. So we're not really running very many good cards. Now, Merfolk, you know, similar thing, tribal deck, they run a lot of bad cards too, right? None of their lords are individually that exciting. But what they do have hidden in their deck is things like True Name Nemesis, which can completely change the way a game works. Because if you stick a True Name Nemesis into play, your opponent's hoping to beat you down with a creature, they simply can't anymore. Because you have a True Name Nemesis holding the fort, and then you can beat down with the other creatures. Again, it's another creature that can ignore blocking. So even if you don't have Island Walk, you have this creature that is guaranteed to keep bashing away and just getting the damage in. Another thing we didn't come across today uh, was Stoneforge Mystic decks, which I think we will really would really struggle against. Like a Cold is going to beat everything we're doing. A Batascale is probably going to beat everything we're doing too. Even a Jitte is going to give us a lot of pause for thought at the very least. So... I don't know what this deck is supposed to be good against. And when we look at the sideboard, we don't have any particularly good haymakers, right? We've kind of been a bit of a slave to the theme here, and we've got, like, these guys because they're humans, but they're not that good. It's not like we can say, oh, okay, let's have a Kataki. That's going to help us beat the 8-cast matchup. So, so, you know, we, we don't have that as an option. Um... So, you know, we don't have any sort of meltdown Null Rod tick. Like, if we were just playing Null Rod instead of these, it would just be better as well. We just don't have any big haymakers to bring out. Like, Nightclubber and Oars of Pontiff are going to be pretty reasonable against the Elves matchup, for sure. But even when we managed to kill, like, four Thopters or whatever it was with the Nightclubber, it didn't really matter. Um, it would have mattered if it came down a turn earlier, to be fair. But our mana base is... A little bit tricky to try and cast three mana spells, right? We are relying on Aether Vial to cast our three mana spells. And I'm not really sure if that's a good idea. Feels like it's very easy for people to stop us. Especially with the amount of Pithing Needles in the format in main decks due to Urza Saga right now. And if it's not Pithing Needle, it's going to be Khan. We had that jammed against us as well. It just doesn't feel like we have particularly great cyborg cards. Like Meddling Mage is the only one that actually feels like a decent... Like, you know, Fairy Macabre is fine, it does what it does. But if your opponent's playing Reanimator and they hit you with a Discard spell before going off, then your Fairy Macabre's not going to do anything. But Meddling Mage is a card against something like Doomsday, where you play it and your opponent can't win until they get rid of it. Which is quite nice. And I guess you could play Meddling Mage in a similar fashion against some of the Storm decks. And it's going to be okay there. But Storm decks usually have a lot of flexibility through things like Burning Wish. Or the Urza Saga backup plan, which we've already seen is something that's incredibly good against us because their creatures are just bigger. So yeah, we're, we're diluting our colours to not really get anything good out of it. We're just weakening our mana base to play bad cards. That's you know this is a deck of honestly this is not really a legacy deck is my analysis on it. It feels like playing like standard or whatever whilst your opponents are doing other stuff like even the silly rhinos deck. At least it has. The ability to dump eight power on turn one that, you know we need several turns to develop that sort of amount of power and if what we're doing is worse than the rhino deck then surely it just shouldn't be done now you could get like the super sweet curve and get matchups that are not necessarily going to punish you as much but it feels like the amount of leagues you'd have to play with this deck to finesse your way into a 5-0 is ridiculous it just feels just a very weak deck to me and I just I have what I consider to be a much stronger humans deck uh, ready to play at some point when they put all the commander cards that are still not online yet on magic online 
Um, maybe that's me tooting my own horn a little bit, but as you saw, all the things we did, like we had one, two, three curves and stuff like that. We had the cars we we're supposed to have, and it just didn't line up, preferably against any legacy decks we played today. Like a single Fury beats us a lot of the time. And, you know, there's a fair few decks that are playing the Furies, whether it's the Initiative decks or the Painted decks. You know, there's a fair few Furies to contend with. And I don't know how we beat those, which feels like a real issue. We didn't even play against any of the hard control decks that would just remove things and just kill us at their leisure. Yeah, sorry to be so down on this deck, but I, I did not enjoy playing it. And it did not feel like a good deck. Now, sometimes I play some decks that don't do very well but are kind of fun to play as well. But this just didn't have anything of note in my opinion. I think this is just not a particularly viable option. Um, can't say any more about it than that. Kind of reminds me a little bit of when I played Slivers and it just felt that we were outclassed by all the creatures and all the stuff going on. And again, we had a mana base that was very susceptible to loads of things our opponent was doing. I feel if you want to play some sort of aggro deck that's like tribally, you probably want to try and stick to a mana base where you're not going to get caught out. There's only so many things you can play around, right? Having a solid mana base and jamming is better. Like even that rubbish uh, zombies deck I played a while back on the channel, I think I played it twice. That felt better than this because we have better disruptive elements because we have Thoughtseize, him, duress or whatever. You know, we actually had more meaningful disruption. Thalia slows your opponent down a turn, but then what? It's not like we're Death and Taxes where you slow your opponent down and then that lets you deploy more things that constrict what your opponent can do. We don't have that. We're just trying to get over the line. But we're playing a two-mana, two-power guy to slow our opponent down whilst we try and put more creatures on the board to try and beat them down. But all it does is slow them down by one turn and that's not normally going to be that useful in terms of how you know this deck tries to win the game by just playing out loads of guys. All right. Uh, I'm, I think I'm done ragging on this deck now. My advice is do not play this deck. Simple as. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and check out the Patreon in the description below. Uh, I've lost some play points today, so if you want to throw some money my way, perhaps to read some articles. I think I've just, by now, I think the article on Rainbow Depths should be up on my Patreon, as well as my massive primer for Green Black Turbo Depths is on there if you want to check out as well. All right. Thank you very much for watching this disaster, and goodbye.